Hello everyone, welcome to this part 7 of the Campaign of Doom, where today we are going to be playing a... Actually, we're going to be playing a special game today, not one of the standard six scenarios included, but this is an early preview of a test scenario that we're running through at the moment, we're sort of finalising, so we're going to give you a quick view of it here. What it's called is... At the moment, it's called Civilian Recruitment. Now, we might not stick with that title, but it certainly gives you an idea of what's going on. These two groups here, so the Long Drawn Death with their five remaining fighters that they have at the moment, and the Spark of the Free People with their five remaining fighters that they... Well, actually not five remaining fighters they have, but five from their group, are going to be going around trying to recruit these six civilians here. Now, these will begin the game sort of randomly scattered about the table, and you will see that the models from each side will try and go up to them, entice them to join them and see what happens. We'll also explain in the post-game how, which you get to see if you're a patron, by the way, you get to see in the post-game what happens with these civilians that we recruit. And it actually has an opportunity to not so much earn you money, but as a fast-track way to earn you a few extra models if, like the long-drawn death, you're suffering a little bit in that regard. Anyway, we're going to get this set up and we will show you the table. So we did almost forget to actually show you the teams in this case, but today for the Spark of the Free People, we have the Alchemist with Basic Weapon, one, two, three pirates who all have basic weapons and pistols, and then we also have this Mark's person with bow and sword. Now this is the one who has the bloodthirsty skill, so he actually gets to move a little bit further each time when he charges into combat. As for the Long Drawn Death, we've done, first of all, a bit of a swap out, so we have this model here for the Alchemist, because they have two daggers, whereas the previous one only had one. We've also got this model here who's got sword and now a dagger, which is a cultist. We have a cultist with bludgeon. Now we have two marksperson's as well with bow and actually basic weapon now. We'll find some other models for them next time. But on top of that, this one here has an extra wound from the skill it has. And this one here is danger dodger, so it has an easier opportunity to either run away from being shot at or in combat when using a reaction. And as we can see, that is both sides deployed. So we have deployed these civilian models in the middle. They are more than eight inches away from the center of the table, and they're also more than four inches away from each other. In fact, that one just needs to move up a little bit there. So the aim of the game here is to go up to the civilians, roll a dice, see what the action is that they take. They'll either flee or join you. And then once all the civilians have been either fled or joined, we can then proceed with attacking each other and trying to keep our civilian models alive, which you will see. However, in the testing that we're doing, civilians that you have taken do count for your pluck test, so you will actually be able, in this case, to add models potentially to the pluck test you'll be taking in terms of uh, the chance of you running away. As for deployment of our models, over here, I have gone for quite a straightforward sort of line here because I just want to surge forward and try and get those civilians. As for my opponents, they've gone for two pirates over here on the outside flank and I've also gone for a similar sort of central surge over here. So what we're going to do is go into turn one and we will show you how this scenario works. We might not actually be able to catch up with any of the civilians in the first turn, but then into the second turn we will see what happens. At the start of the game, before any of us move in the first turn, but after everyone is deployed, I'm going to use my dodgy map distribution, which my opponent was the one who rolled for it in the last post-game, but I'm going to use it against them now. Yay! With that, I'm actually going to move this model here. I get to make a normal move with him, so I'm going to pop him back on the other side of this building like that. And then I'm going to take the Alchemist, and I'm actually going to move her around and over here, mostly so that she goes away from these civilians over here, but it sort of moves her too far over this way as well, so it's harder for it to get back into the game. So rolling for the first turn, let's see who gets initiative. My opponent rolls a five. I roll a five, so we'll roll again. Five and two, so I'm going second with one reaction token, and my opponent will be going first. With that, we have come to the end of the turn one movement phase. My opponent has moved up with their pirates across the middle of the board, Mark's person is trying to catch back up after me putting them towards the back of the board. And then their alchemist has moved up around over this way. As for me, I've gone for a rush down the middle here to try and get these civilians. And then I've also moved my two Mark's persons over here to try and get shots onto these models as they come up to get this guy. 
at the end of the movement phase, what has happened here is that these two model, this model over here is in range of this civilian, and this model over here is in range of this civilian. Now, as my opponent has initiative, they will be rolling first. So if they were to roll a three plus, this civilian will join them. If they roll a one or two, they run away in fear. So my opponent has rolled a four. So this model here, we're just gonna shift them away to maintain that one inch gap now that they've accepted it. But this civilian is now on my opponent's side. Over here, we're gonna do the same with these two models. A five, so this civilian has also joined me and I'm just gonna slightly shuffle that so it's an inch away like that. However, now that these two civilians have joined us, they can be targeted by the enemy as though they were part of our team. They do have their own individual profile for the moment, and they're either armed with dagger or staff. It's kind of obvious which one each model has. On top of that, these remaining four, which haven't been reached, will... These remaining four, which haven't been reached, they can not be targeted for charges, shooting, and anything like that. So at the moment we have four up for grabs, but these four can also not be attacked and targeted until someone has spoken to them and they've either run away or joined. With that, we actually come to the shooting phase, wherein we've worked out the only shot that can take place. So my opponent's marked person here can take a long shot all the way over to my alchemist. Now they will need a six to hit, because it's move, co move penalty, cover penalty for soft cover, and then long range as well. No, my opponent has missed. Turn two initiative, let's see who goes first. My opponent rolls a five. I roll a three, so my opponent will be going first, and I will get two reaction tokens. As we come to the end of the movement phase for turn two, we have moved all of our models to sort of capitalize on the guys in the middle and then try and move the ones, the civilians that we've claimed away. With that in mind, what we're now gonna do is we are going to roll for the ones that we've moved into contact with. First of all, my opponent here, because they have an initiative, that is now theirs. So we're gonna just shuffle this guy back to maintain the gap. And this model over here. Oh no, unfortunately this guy runs away. As for myself, while we're here, over here. Okay, so this guy is now recruited. I'm just going to shuffle him away a little bit. And then this model here, hopefully he was worth it. Yay, I get to recruit him as well. And I'm just going to move back a little bit to maintain the inch gap there. First bit in the shooting phase, my opponent is going to throw a scatter bomb to there to point they can see. So it's going to go off on a three plus. Let's see what happens. It does go off. Now we've already pre-measured these two models are both in range, this model is not. So on the civilian, it takes a damage four hit. They are resistance two, so that is actually gonna go up to a four. So they will take a single wound. Now my opponent's gonna roll for my cultist. Ooh, who actually takes two because that's damage four against resistance three. So my opponent has declared that they were gonna shoot Mark's person into civilian. Oof. But I am going to react with a reaction token, and my three inches is actually going to go and put me just here, where I'm going to go and cower behind the new alchemist who's leading me. Still, my opponent does get to shoot. They are more than four inches away, so they would require a three. Then they're looking at soft, uh, soft cover for the alchemist, and they've moved, so it would go down to being a five. If they roll a four, it will hit the alchemist. Reroll for being a marks person. <laughs> no, maybe a few more rolls and they might get there. <laughs> so for the next bit, we have two models shooting one after the other. First is this pirate into my alchemist. Needs a five to hit because I don't get any cover, but they are at long range. No, unfortunately, none there. Next, it's this pirate over the cover and at long range looking for a six. Reroll for being a pirate with a pistol. Ooh, that's a hit. Rolling to wound. Damage four, resistance three. No, my opponent doesn't wound. Next, my opponent is gonna fire shot from this model into this model, looking at a five, because they're within within range, or within short range, but hard cover. Reroll for being a pirate. No, just one under what they needed. Hang on, no, I need some poison counters. First bit of my shooting, I am going to throw a number three, one of my number three alchemy, right there. So this is the one that I can pick a point within six. Roll a d6 on a three plus. 
that's a three plus. All models within three inches take a poison counter and will need to roll at the start of the turn. So this model, this civilian, and ooh, come back. This pirate are all now poisoned and will need to roll for the rest of the game. Next bit of shooting, Mark's person down here is going to fire into this pirate. I have moved, but I am within four inches, so they cancel each other out. It's a hit. Rolling to wound. Ooh, it's a critical, so I'll just pop that next to my opponent's model. Coming up to my last bit of shooting here, I'm going to fire all the way down into my opponent's Mark's person in 12 inches. They are in the open, so I'm only going to have one penalty for moving here. Ooh, I get a hit. Rolling to wound. Ooh, my opponent's not going to be happy with me. But they are definitely on one wound remaining. My opponent, for their first charge into combat, is going to go pirate into Mark's person. So we get one attack from the pirate, hitting on a four with their sword, which hits, rolling to wound, which doesn't. So I'm going to retaliate with why one attack with a basic weapon, hitting on a four, rolling to wound. Okay, so I get a single wound back on my opponent. On a three plus, they back away, which they do. So my opponent's going to back two inches away. And then I'm going to roll a four. Hmm. I'm actually just going to use that to uh, hop over there. Yeah. I'm just going to square him up like that. For my part of the combat phase, because my opponent is not making any more charges, first off, I'm going to charge here. Now, I'm actually just going to do a short charge like that to get into base contact there. One attack, hitting on a four. It's a hit. Basic weapon, so we're looking at damage three, resistance three. Ooh, nothing. So my opponent attacks back, hitting on a four, which they do. Roll into wound, which they do. And it is me running away, which is... Yes, just because I have a high intelligence for being a marked person. And I'm going to go like that. And my opponent's going to roll a six. Oh, we'll come back to you and see where they've decided to go. So my opponent is going to go inch over for three. And then I'm just going to pop around out here for two. So they can try and chase down one of my civilians who's hiding around the back. Last charge for me. This alchemist is going to run around like so and attack my opponent's marks person. So I have two daggers because my opponent bought me an extra one. How nice of them. Hitting on threes. <laughs> Just wounding on fives and sixes. Oh, and that one six is just what we need to take the last wound away. And while we're here, two. Okay, so I'm still a bit in the open. I'm actually going to go go around to here. Yeah. End of turn two. So as we can see, my opponent has lost one model and had the civilian run away, but that's unfortunate. So what we're going to do is we are going to pop on into turn three. Start of turn three, my opponent actually has to roll poison first. So this model, one to two. Ooh, they take a single wound. And then this pirate also... Wow, this is not going well for the spark of the free people, is it? Turn three initiative phase, my opponent gets a six. I get a three. So that would be my opponent going first and me with a reaction token. As we come on to the shooting phase, my opponent is going to have their pirate spin around on his heels and fire into my alchemist. So it's definitely short range and they haven't moved, so it's going to be hitting on a three. That's a hit. Damage four, resistance three. Ooh, that is a single wound on my alchemist. Next, my opponent is going to fire their pirate, who is against this bit of cover so they can see over it, and is going to shoot into my civilian hiding over here, looking at a five, which they get. Damage four, resistance two, so plus two to this roll. Four goes up to a six, last two wounds, and that is the civilian gone. Next bit of shooting, another pirate from here to here, who is more than four inches away just doesn't hit next alchemy my opponent is going to shoot the steel bullet from here over to my civilian 
what I've realized is actually in the open just, so what I'm going to do is use this and move them along like that. So my opponent now has hard cover on top of their movement penalty, so that's going to be a minus three, which will take them down to a five or six to hit. Which they get, so we're looking at damage four over resistance two. That goes up to a five, but it is still only a single wound in total. First bit of shooting from me on this turn. Snake Venom Dart from my Alchemist is going to go into my opponent's civilian model, but this pirate is in the way. So we're looking at a two to hit, down to a three for moving, back up to a two for super short range, but it will be minus one for him giving soft cover to him. So if I roll a two, hits him. Three plus, hits him. Five, so it hits the civilian. This is damage five. Awesome, does absolutely nothing in that case. Next for me, this marks person is going to fire a shot down into this model here, into this pirate. Hitting on a five because they have hard cover, but there are no other penalties. That's a hit. Looking at a 50-50 to get that last wound on them. Ooh, and he just does. So the pirate is removed. And he's got an extra kill. After that rather spot on display, the marks person down here is going to fire like so and can just get my opponent's alchemist in the open, but they have moved, so it will be a four. It's a hit. Roll into wound. Damage three, resistance three. No, no wound there. My opponent's pirate is going to charge like so into my civilian, try and push them back. Looking at one attack, hitting on a four. No, and they get no rerolls. However, my civilian is going to attack back, hitting on a five because he's rubbish. Yep, and he failed miserably as well. So he's going to look at running away on a three, which he makes. So he's going to go two inches like that. Now my opponent's going to roll three inches and see where they go. And with that, my opponent has decided to move there. Next for my opponent, the Mal alchemist, Malchemist, Alchemist is going to charge into my civilian, which they can just make like this. There we go. They have one attack hitting on a three. We'll count that as a three. And then they're armed with a sword or basic weapon, so it's damage three, resistance two. That's enough to cause a wound. I get to attack back in glorious fashion, hitting on a five. Wounding on a five or six. Don't wound. Yay! So I can try and run away, which I do, and I'm going to run away. Like this. And take my two wounds with me. And my opponent's going to roll and see how far they get to go. Five inches, so we'll quickly come back with that. My opponent has decided they're going to put themselves just there. It's not quite five inches, but that's kind of where they need to be at this point. My opponent's next charge, this model here, is going to jump over and charge my alchemist like so. This is so they can easily block if I win this combat. So my opponent's going to roll one attack, hitting on a four, which doesn't. Two daggers from me, hitting on threes, both of which do. Fives and sixes to wound. Need to we'll re-roll that. Okay, we'll count that one. Uh, neither of them wound, so looking at a two plus to run away, which we do. I'm going to back away. Um, actually, just going to back away like that and then go into that corner. Then my opponent's going to roll a dice. It gets to go two inches, which I gather they are going to... Actually, I'm gathering they're going to shuffle like this, because then that way I can only get to them, but I definitely cannot get to that civilian. For my half of the charges, first one is going to be like that, into my opponent's side, with my, again, two daggers, hopefully getting something this time. One hit. Five and six. It's a single wound. My opponent has, oopsie daisy, one remaining. And then my opponent is going to attack back. One attack hitting on a four, which does. Wounding on a four as well, which does. Not the best outcome. And then I'm going to roll to attack back because we have both suffered a wound. One hit, needing that five and six. I'm... No, I'm not going to count that, because of where it's landed. 
However, I just make it worse by rolling a six. So that's my opponent's pirate. Taken out, and then three inches. I'm just going to go here and stare down this civilian, and then I'm going to put that up to two. Next, and actually the final charge for me, is going to be round here into this pirate. So I have two weapons in this case. First of all, basic weapon. Doesn't hit. And then dagger. Doesn't hit. Wow, so my opponent gets one attack hitting on a four. Which also doesn't hit, so they're running away on a three plus. Which they do, so my opponent's going to back away. Two inches like that. I'm going to roll. One inch. Oh joy. I'm going to go there. With that, we have come to the end of turn three. For not being that many models on either side, it's actually been quite a vicious game this one. We are just about to head into turn four as well. Coming into turn four, first thing we have to roll for is poison over here. Unfortunately that means the model takes another wound, however they are still alive. Next bit of turn four, determination test for my opponent, or determination roll, Let's see what they get. They pass just, but they have passed. Next, while we're here, we're actually going to do a pluck test and they only have four models remaining because they do count the civilians as models on their side. So they have just passed that one as well, so they're still in this turn. Turn four initiative phase, my opponent asked me to roll first. I don't know why. I've rolled a six, my opponent rolls a six as well, so we're going to have a bit of a re-roll here. My opponent... I rolled a two, my opponent has rolled a two as well. Eventually one of us is going to roll a different number. Six for me. <laughs> I rolled a six, my opponent has rolled a five, so they'll be going second with a reaction token. End of movement phase, over here, I've sort of boxed in this civilian. Over here, kind of boxed in my opponent, but it's actually to their advantage because then they can shoot out these models, which they would have done if I moved. And then we both have one civilian sort of running for the hills over here. First bit from myself for the shooting, this model into this model. Let's see what happens. I'll roll that again. Okay, this is about the same hit anyway. And then we're looking at uh, damage three, resistance three. That is a single wound on my opponent. It's a little bit of a long shot, but this marks person here is gonna fire at this guy here, this pirate, looking at a six to hit. Looking at a 50-50 to cause that last wound. It really is not my opponent's day, because that is another model removed. For my opponent, which I think this is the only model they've got left to shoot with, they're going to have their alchemist open fire over here with the bullet storm, and it is going to go on this model, this model, and this model. So what we're actually going to do is start here and work that way. So two to hit. That's a hit. Looking at a 50-50 to score the last wound. That is him out of the game, so I can mark up her with a kill counter. Next, that's a hit. In this case, it's actually resistance 2, so we're looking at a 3+. plus. That is also him very much out of the game, so she goes up to 2, and then one more shot into this guy, hitting on a 2. Hits, looking at damage 3, resistance 3. That is also a wound, so that is probably the most effective use of that roll I've ever seen. First combat from my side, blind charge here, because we can't actually see each other. So in goes the marks person on 2+, plus, which they do. They're going to come up like that, and then have their one attack hitting on a 4, which doesn't hit. My opponent has one attack hitting on a 5 with their dagger. Wounding on a 5 with their dagger, roll to see if they get it. No, they don't. So in this case, it would be roll and see if the civilian runs away on a 3+. plus. They do. Unfortunately, they can't actually really move anywhere apart from just sort of turn away from me. So I'm going to roll a 4. And I'm going to roll... And I'm going to move with that to go there. And I'm going to move like that. And there we go. So my opponent is actually going to react to this charge here and charge headlong into me. That way they can push me back if they manage to survive. They have one attack, hitting on a five, which hits, looking at a five as well to wound, or six. 
No, they don't. But I'm going to retaliate with my two daggers. One of which hits, one of which misses. It is damage two, but he is only resistance two. Oh, and that would be just enough to get that last wound into him. And while I'm here, I rolled a two. With all my combats done, just leaves my opponent to charge into me. I gather they're probably going to charge like that to try and shove me back. And they're looking at one attack hitting on a three. I'm looking at one attack hitting on a four, actually, my bludgeon. Hits, damage four, resistance three, so plus one. That would go up to a six. So my opponent is going to suffer two wounds and then roll a d6. On a two, they are fine, so they can just pop back a couple of inches. And then I can go a grand total of an inch. I'm going to do that. With that, we have come to the end of turn... Ugh, I want to say four, but it doesn't look like it should be four. Yeah, we have come to the end of turn four, so we're just going to go into turn five. First bit of turn five is determination. My opponent has bravely decided to go first with their five models out. So let's see what they get. They roll a five, so they're actually okay at this point for determination. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get them to quickly roll their pluck test now while they're here, because they have two models on the board, so they're looking at rolling one or two, they're okay, anything higher, and they run away. Okay, so my opponent has run away at the end of this game, but what we're quickly gonna do is just do my determination as well, because determination should be done before pluck for both players. As for myself, determination first. So I pass my determination. I then have a pluck test, I believe. One, two, three, four, five. So I could fail on a six. No, I don't fail my pluck test either. So in this case, I, my opponent has failed theirs, but passed the determination. But it doesn't matter because that means that they run away and I win this game. And there you have it. That is the end of the game. So as we can see here, both Ralkmith survived, surprisingly. But we both have one civilian each at the end. So when it comes to post-game, we're actually going to show you what keeping that civilian alive actually achieves. So even though my opponent failed their pluck test, so long as the civilian is not removed by failing determination, because that would mean them just running away and never coming back, or by being removed from the game, in which case they would just decide it's not a good idea to join in, it does mean that we actually managed to end the game on a loss for my opponent because of the failed pluck test. If they hadn't, it would have been a draw. But even then, I feel it was going a bit, unfortunately, one-sided against my opponent by the end there. Now, if you want to see what actually happens in this, at the end of this game, you will actually need to see the post-game video. And the only way you're going to see the post-game video is if you're a patron. At any level, from the £2 scoundrel tier to the novice £4 tier and the local hero £6 tier. Each of those is monthly. For that, you will get a variety of rules, tools, campaign solo play and various other things that allow you to play the game that's in the novice tier at four pound scoundrel tier will get you access to videos and to the chat groups and things but it will not get you any of the rules for the game and the local hero tier will get you access to all of that but on top of that it will also get you access to early previews and the option to name a model in forthcoming campaigns that we have we haven't named any exclusively for this one but Coming up, we will be starting one where we're going to allow players to put in names in the hat for models. So if you want to get involved in that, head to the Patreon link in the description below, or the one sort of hidden about this video somewhere. I might link it somewhere around here. Um, and that is it. So with that in mind, it's time to say goodbye from me, goodbye from my opponent behind the camera, and we will see patrons during the week for the post game, and we'll see the rest of you next Sunday for the Battle Report. Thank you very much and goodbye.